Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi there. It is wonderful to see all of your faces and your children and your dog. I see one dog. It's wonderful to see you all. My name is Alyssa Lubo. I am the Youth Programs Manager at MCA Denver, and this is Laugh Your Craft Off. This is part two in a three-week series where MCA is partnering with local artists and comedians to take your grandma's craft circle to a whole new level. Thank you all for crafting with us tonight. Before I pass it off to our comedian and MC for the night, I have a bit of housekeeping. If you're comfortable doing so, please turn your camera on so we can see all of your beautiful faces. And this will also help our artist, Melissa, pace her instructions properly if she can see where you're at in your art making process. Feel free to ask Melissa questions in the chat or unmute yourself to ask a question. And if you need help with Zoom at any point, click the chat button and send a private message to MCA Denver. That is everything on my end. And I would love to introduce you to our MC for the night, Hannah Jones. Hannah is a stand-up comedian, writer, and improviser based here in Denver, Colorado. She is the creator of the Denver satire publication, Westish. You can also find her writing in Apt, Split Lip, Atlantis, and more. She performs weekly on the improv team Barkley, and this year she was even invited to the Beast Village and High Plains Comedy Festivals. Without further ado, Hannah Jones, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I dressed up for the occasion. I'm wearing my business casual a la 2020, right? So that's turtleneck on top, sweatpants on the bottom. That's just like lipstick, no shoes. Um, I really love the idea as soon as I heard about it of this like at home community crafting series um, because I come from a very crafty household, um, but we mostly sew. So that's my mom, my sister and me. And we all sew, which is basically to an outsider that's just like staring at a tiny machine and occasionally screaming expletives when a bobbin runs out. Um, but I've been sewing a lot. I think it's fun to have something that you can do with your hands. It's like really grounding, especially at a time like this. Um, last night, I actually finished um, a big project because I knew I'd need my coffee table cleared for tonight. So I finished sewing this dress. Oops. Um, yeah, it is made of organza, um, which I'm convinced was designed by the Soviets to sabotage American seamstresses. Um, it is the devil's fiber for sure. Um, well, the nice thing about this dress, in my opinion, is that it can really be dressed up or dressed down, right? Like I could, I could easily wear it with like a jean jacket and some sneakers and go to King Supers you know, to dress it down in 2020, absolutely. It's the outing of the week. Um, but, you know, or I could really go for it. I could have a shawl and some heels and I could, you know, wear it to Whole Foods, you know, dress up or down, lots of different options with something like this. I could wear it around the block so that my neighbors um, can kind of look at me and ponder like, oh, where's she going? Why is she so cool, you know? Um, or I could even like wear this dress on a trip to the little free library in my neighborhood, um, just slip some liberal propaganda into the children's books. But most importantly, this hand sewn dress tells everybody that in the event that we all have to scurry into apocalyptic communes, I have some hard skills to contribute. Okay, and that's what crafting is all about, in my opinion. Um, but I think it's, I think it's basically safe to say I've gone a little bit crazy lately, like everybody has, especially now that it's winter and we can't go out as much. Um, I can neither confirm nor deny whether I spent 45 minutes last night crying because I found out that otters um, have a little pouch in their armpits where they keep the smoothest rocks that they find. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can think about that one later. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're headed into a new year. And even after all of like the trauma and the hardship, I'm also feeling really hopeful. Okay, and as we can all get vaccinated and reemerge into society, my one real hope is that we can hold on to all the lessons that we learned. Like specifically for me, that bangs are a mistake 
right? <laughs> like I think girls with things should ultimately get vac vaccinated last so that we have more time to grow them out before going out in public. Um, but thank you for coming to my unhinged little TED talk about um, crafting in society today. Um, ultimately, let's get this party started. Um, our artist this evening who will be showing us how to make some clay wall hangings is Melissa Piazza. Melissa is a local artist who loves to show themes of nature by working in the medium of paint and clay, like we will be tonight. Her creations explore connections between the practical and the whimsical, the real and the surreal. She is also a K-12 art teacher and her teaching philosophy is all about empowerment. So please welcome Melissa Piazza. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Hannah, so much. Um, I'm so excited to be leading this lesson tonight. And um, yes, it's all about empowering everybody to create their most creative wall hanging that just brightens up their space that we're all living in and cooped up in. And just to just color our world and make it just really awesome. Anyway, so we're going to be doing wall hangings tonight. Um, and so everyone has their materials, but I love wall hanging so much because literally the sky is the limit. Like it is like my shirt. <laughs> um, so I have some examples to get going. Um, here's one, and this doesn't even involve a dowel rod, um, just stringing up um, different kinds of things. You can just use so many different materials. That's what I love about this so much. Um, and I guess I should introduce myself a little bit more. So yeah, I am a K through 12 art teacher. Um, I worked at Arvada K-8 last year and now I actually relocated to the Western Slope. So I'm not as local anymore, but I do have a lot of connections to Denver still because I lived there for 13 years. And um, yeah, so I'm just still creating and teaching and just, you know, trying to make this life the best thing possible. Anyway, so here's another wall hanging too. Um, what I love about Model Magic is you can do anything you want with it. And I think everybody got one of these packages, right? Woo! Okay, in those little tubs. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to show you a few more examples too. I'm going to bring you to another room. And just to let you know that it might be a little glitchy because my Wi-Fi isn't as clear in these front rooms, but I'm just gonna show you some more examples real quick as I run through my house. <laughs> so here's one right here. And here's another one. So the possibilities are endless, guys. Um, I hope you have your creative engines running. Um, here's another one, the smaller one. And for the hanging piece, the material, I used um, just some found old juniper wood from my hikes. And then I'm also gonna be using a dowel rod tonight. And I know all of you got a dowel rod. Can I see everybody's dowel rods? Sweet, awesome, cool. Here are mine, I painted mine black. So you can also like spray paint your dowel rods or paint them at another point in time too. Um, something I've really enjoyed doing too lately is marbling my model magic, which we will be doing tonight too. So um, anyway, Let's get our model magic out. Hmm, before that, actually, let's come up with a plan. Um, so you can kind of sketch out an idea if you want to um, think about some shapes that you'd like to create and hang up. Um, think about different kinds of symbols or things that are really important to you, like maybe they're flowers or just circles, um, other kinds of shapes, whatever you want. Um, so you might want to take out a sketchbook or a piece of paper and a marker to get that going. Um, 
And I'm gonna link um, a Pinterest page right now, all about wall hangings. Perfect. Fun. Yeah. And I see you have a wall hanging in your background. Oh yeah, actually. So that's my um, my roommate contributed those like three hanging pots, and then we put some Christmas tree branches in them. And we haven't taken down our Christmas decorations yet. No, I don't either until New Year's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the deadline. Yeah, definitely. So I love nature themes in my art, as you can see. Um, I have a landscape painting in the background here. Um, I have kind of a more kind of psychedelic flower painting right here. I've got a Buddha in the background. So I'm really inspired by nature and color and florals and all kinds of botanicals, psychedelic art, all kinds of things like that. Yeah. What's everyone else inspired by? Um, I really like the different moon ones, like the phases of the moon and then the moon and star one. Those are so cute. Oh, yeah. Are you looking at the wall hangings? Yeah, on the Pinterest board. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Um, I've been really into making clay mushrooms lately, and so I've been making some morels and oh that's so cute <laughs> some other kind of things so that could be something people want to do if they want to like make some mushroom clay hangings or you know whenever they feel like can you show us that mushroom again i missed it yeah Thank you. A oh so cute <laughs> thanks <laughs> and here's another one your classic kind of one a lot of my other wall hangings are made with real clay that i had to fire and what i like about model magic is like because i don't have much access to a kiln right now it's just so nice that this is just air drying um and it really works well i'm gonna link another thing to it's a recipe for um clay if you just want to make it yourself like make the clay at home yes like with normal kitchen ingredients or special ingredients exactly. normal normal kitchen ingredients oh wow yeah just basically cornstarch and flour my sister always makes these ornaments these like christmas ornaments that are like salt dough ornaments that are yeah. like basically like play-doh so they're like edible but they're like really gross because they're <laughs> way too salty for a person it's to very eat very salty i remember trying to eat them as a kid <laughs> her dog ate one this year it was not a good time <laughs> oh, not no. very sick <laughs> oh no <laughs> so i'm gonna start sketching out an idea while everyone else does too And really the fun thing about this is gathering materials from your house to just kind of improvise and create what you have, like from what you have around your house. Like if you have cookie cutters, you can totally use those to cut things out of your model magic. It's a very ornamental art. So you can, you can even like string up your ornaments from your tree <laughs> if you wanted to use them all year round.
So this is an idea I have. Um, it's plants. Um, kind of thinking about the new year and what I want to manifest. And I want to take better care of my plants and just water them more and maybe propagate them more and grow them more in my house. Um, so I'm going to try to create some of these tropical looking plants tonight. Okay, I'm going to kind of steal that leaf design because I was already thinking about doing a leaf one because I have the green. The yellow and blue, I think I'm going to do like moon and star situation with, but the green, I couldn't figure it out. And I um, have also really neglected my plants this year. So maybe a clay wall hanging plant is more my vibe. <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> I'm gonna be kind of working with a few different examples too. I have some things already made. So I'll show you different kinds of processes of where I'm at. So Hannah, where are you from? Um, I am from North Carolina. Raleigh? Uh, I'm from Fayetteville. It's like a smaller military town, kind of central. Ooh. Are you from Colorado originally? I'm from Illinois originally, kind of the Chicago suburbs. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I came out here for college and just stayed. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people who had that same path. Mm -hmm. Is everybody here like in Colorado right now? Thumbs up <laughs> if you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Victor. <laughs> so, Melissa, are you still um, teaching this year? Or is it like online or? It's hybrid. So it's one week off, one week on for half of our students at our high school. How has that been like adjusting your curriculum? It's been interesting. It's a lot of catch up. Um, for students coming back, but it's working actually the best way possible. Um, smaller class sizes, it seems to be working pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Have you always taught high school or have you taught other ages? Um, I've taught all kinds of ages. Um, yeah, I think I really enjoy high school teaching though. Yeah. I actually taught with Victor at a um, nonprofit in Denver called Art Street. So if you guys are ever interested in other like art education programming, definitely check out Art Street. It's a really great program for teenagers. Totally. <gasps> oh no. What happened? Oh, I made a terrible choice. So I Oh no, I was going to roll out my clay and I was like, oh, like I have a wooden dowel right here. It's like a rolling pin. And that is not the move. Nobody do that. Cause the wood is like not the right texture. It's like porous and now it's like really stuck to it. Oh no. Thanks for letting us know that. And so that brings me to a good lesson for all of us. Um, yeah. So now that I've drawn mine and a lot of us are probably ready with our plan. I'm just going to roll mine. I think the most important thing with this model magic is to like work with it as fresh as possible because it's like the moisture will dry out. So like when you are working with it, just take the little piece that you want to work with and then close the rest. Like don't let the other parts stay out because they might dry. Um, okay, good to know. But, yeah. So just like Roll it with your hands, um, make sure it's all smooth and such. And rolling it out, um, you can get really creative. Like I'm gonna use this old bottle that had a liqueur in it um, to roll it out. But you could use anything you could use. Maybe not those dowels, um, as you said. You could use like a can or a spray paint bottle um, or I mean, I don't know, there's so many options. What What is everyone gonna use to roll out their model magic? Because I think that should be our next step right now. 
Um, I just ended up using clay because that's all I had. Nice. I'm just how I like, used the floor to like, you know. You kind of slapped it on there because the yeah, gravity, gravity. I'm gonna go back to start. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you this can is. Use your hand too. You can just press it down. You know, kind of like you're making tortillas or pizza dough, right? Model Magic is great because it's like super stretchy. Um, I was gonna try to make some natural materials, um, natural ingredients for this, but Model Magic is just a lot more flexible. So I just did this with my hand. And then to cut your shapes out, you could use a pencil. Um, or if you do work in clay, you can use like a needle tool. Melissa, I bet you have a needle tool around you. <laughs> a bunch of them in like random places around my house too. It's really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alyssa's a ceramicist. How do you like using model magic compared to clay, Alyssa? I really like it because I feel like the commitment is lower. Like. It's easy to change things. It's really fast to use. When you make something, you can just make something else. Whereas when you work in ceramics, it's like a really long process. And so you don't get instant gratification. And so I love it. Yeah, it is really gratifying. What are you making right now? Um, okay, so I was trying to make my cat. Um, but it's like these ears turned more into like little devil horns. So I need to figure out something else. <laughs> Looking good though. I bet that could work out. Thank you for believing in me. <laughs> so I'm wondering if anybody actually has some cookie cutters that they're using right now. Anybody? Doesn't seem like it. Oh yeah, Samantha. Samantha does. Oh, I Samantha think it's Smith's somebody else party. too. Yeah, Samantha does. Sweet. Nice. And I'm gonna go get a plate to work with mine on. Nice. I mean, you can even just make like a bunch of cubes or spheres. Okay, now we're cooking. Got myself a knife and a plate to work on. Awesome. What I'm noticing is it doesn't cut out as good as clay when you're cutting it out, but that's okay, because you can kind of smooth it out a little bit. It kind of feels like I'm using clay combined with gum, like chewing gum. <laughs> it does. Yeah. So Hannah, you come from a fiber kind of artist family, and I know that a lot of wall hangings that are popular these days are macrame. Yeah. Have I've you made a macrame that. kind of thing before? No, that was one of the things that I wanted to do this year. Nice. Um, but I have not gotten around to it yet. I also have seen a lot of those like at home, like tapestry weaving situations where like you use a bunch of different types of yarn. And I think those look really cool. And Melissa, yeah. there's a question in the chat that says, should we be poking holes to hang it before it dries? Definitely, oh. yes. So Model Magic dries in about what, 48, 70 hours. It's kind of long. So I made these last night, these kind of like teardrop marbled ones that I'll show you guys how to make soon. Um, and it's still very kind of, um, it's not moldable still, it's just really soft. 
Um, so yeah, definitely put your hole in before um, you just hang it up. And it should be fully, fully dry before you hang it up? No, I actually hung up a few examples, like that star one that I showed you at the beginning. I'll show you guys again. That actually is still drying. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I made that one yesterday and it's still drying. Um, but make sure, something I learned is that you wanna make sure that the hole is just kind of like, it has enough space between like the end of your piece. So I'll, for example, I'm gonna make it the hole kind of like right here. Just because mm -hmm. you want to make sure that gravity doesn't like pull the string through and tear it. Um, yeah. And if you wanted to be extra safe though, you could make your hole, make all your pieces, lay it out, make sure they're dry and then start hanging them up onto your dowel. That's probably the safer route and I would probably actually do that but I just get so excited. And I just wanted to hang it up. <laughs> I am the same way. <laughs> I always, always try to finish things too early. Yeah. So I have my one monstera leaf kind of ready to go. It kind of looks like a mushroom too. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is mushroom. I know. And you can add like your vein, like I'm adding my veins to it with this tool. I mean, you can use a pencil as well to add texture. Um, so many fun ways to make texture. I don't have that many texture tools, but um, one thing I found today in my house is my dog's airbrush. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's got these like fun little texture things on it. So I'm gonna probably play around with that. Oh, that's really fun. Yeah. Hey, Melissa, another question for you uh, from Christina who asked, can we paint the magic clay? You can totally paint the magic clay. Watercolors work great. Acrylics work well too. I would not use oil paint. Um, so yeah, acrylics and watercolors are great. I'm gonna do a little demo right now on markers, which are super fun. So if you have any markers, grab those right now. And we can all kind of do like a little marbling if we want. And then, and then Kathy just had a great suggestion. She said that she tried cutting the clay with scissors and it worked great. Fantastic oh. recommendation. Awesome. I bet that was kind of some ASMR in a way. It was very satisfying. <laughs> Yeah, I saw somebody do a little demo on Model Magic. They made a lion and then they cut the mane. And that looked really good. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna marble right now. So I'm gonna roll up my clay. And I'm gonna like kind of smush it a tiny bit. And you said you're marbling with just a marker, not with two different colors of clay. Yeah, just a marker, but you can totally marble with two different colors of clay. Just like polymer clay or even silly putty. Or like with regular clay, I'm sure let's see, you've done this with like um, terracotta clay and um, just like a white clay. I'm sure Victor, you've done that too. So with the marker, I just start Just kind of push into it really and I push into it kind of deep too so you're okay just a little warning your markers might be a tiny bit sacrificed um after this 
But I mean, it's all for the model magic and the play hanging. So it's probably good to use like a old marker. This marker is actually still working fine after this, but just a little disclaimer <laughs> for people trying to preserve their markers. That's a helpful warning. I was about to use my roommate's marker. Oh no. I will stick to my own. <laughs> Did the back side too. I'm gonna add another color. What color should I add, everybody? I added, I had blue, and then what color should I go with next? What are you making out of it? Um, I'm just gonna make another leaf. Um, like blue and purple, maybe? Oh, blue and purple leaves. You know, there are some really crazy tropical plants out there. I'm sure there's a blue and purple leaf that exists. Okay, so here's where the fun begins, ready? There's really no right or wrong. You just start molding it, stretching it. And you can kind of twist them even more. And it just, it's so cool how it just turns out to be clay marble. Oh, wow. Oh, yay. Anybody else marbled theirs? Ooh, sweet, Stephanie, awesome. Oh, you made a mountain? Awesome. I love that. Might stain your hands, but okay. <laughs> Crayola markers. Oh, nice! Used a reusable straw to make the hole in your clay. That's great. Ooh, and I see a challenge. So, who has the weirdest household item to make textures in their clay? Oh, I had a dog hairbrush. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna do that soon, but. Um, I have this like strange squirrel chipmunk. It's kind of creepy. My mom sent it to me, but I kind of like it. Um, and I'm using it because it has this like hair texture and I'm pressing that into my clay and it's actually kind of cool. Neat. You can kind of oh. see the texture that's coming through. <laughs> oh yeah. Cool. Okay, I have this glittery Christmas tree Christmas decoration from Target and I'm gonna use it to make the like speckled moon surface texture situation on the marbled green and blue moon. Which actually looks like granite, like super cool. Right? 
I know, like, I, I really want to replace my countertops in my kitchen, but I can't. <laughs> so I can just kind of play with model magic and pretend like I'm really rich and I have marble. <laughs> okay, added benefit, now my clay is sparkly because the glitter is coming off, which is perfect. Oh, nice. And something too with like cutting things out is you can glide. If you kind of glide it at like a, what is it? Like probably like a 20 degree angle. It will kind of cut a little cleaner. So like with my first one, it's a little bit more jagged because I kind of went like at a straight 90 degree angle, but now I'm like gliding it and it really, it's a lot cleaner. Oh, you're right. You feel, yeah, you see that? Mm hmm. Nice. Are you using a pencil, Hannah? I am still using a little kitchen knife. Oh, very good. And it's actually working really well. Nice. And that, knives are like naturally at a good angle, too. Mm hmm. Here's my kind of psychedelic leaf. <laughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. I made my phases of the moon a little small. If the if they're like this big, like here's my finger for reference, and then I poke a tiny hole in it, will it like not be structurally sound or do they hold up pretty well? I've never worked with model magic before. With yours, I would make the hole um, and then let it dry before you hang it up onto your dowel. Yeah, but once it's dry, it should probably hold. Oh, totally. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Up is strong. I wish I could give you my scrap for a moon. <laughs> Little half moon. Anybody else have any interesting textures that they came up with? I don't know if you saw it. I sent a yogi paddle there. Oh, what? I, it's right before the challenge came up. Oh, nice. You know what to make gnocchi with? Yeah. Yeah. And you just oh. roll it. Oh, yeah. Kind it's of really a, cool. A ribbony texture in a way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thanks for sharing that. Sure. I got it from, I'm trying to remember her name. I can't remember. It was an, another ceramist. Right. Okay, I'm gonna marble this one again. Fun how it stretches so wide. Yeah, like, this is the best texture. Yeah, that's so nice. It reminds me of a kneaded eraser. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you sitting in a glass chair? It's beautiful. <laughs> oh no!
Oh, I'm loving this. Melissa, do you have any um, very recent like art project mishap stories <laughs> where things just really went awry for you? Hmm. Let me think here. I mean, it was probably with playing with a new wall hanging using model magic mm -hmm. um, because I poked some holes in it and I wanted to string it up. And it was with that star one. I could actually show you guys. Yeah. Show you what not to do. Because <laughs> art making is all about learning from mistakes, huh? <laughs> so, oh, that's funny. You can see what happened here. So I hung up these stars. And a lot of them are staying really well because um, I had a good amount of space between like the end of the piece and the hole. But one of them, the hole was like too close to the edge of the star. And so you can see, let's see can you see what happened here? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's severed and I tried to Kind of attached to the string with wire, but then the wire, surgery. And, yeah, and gravity pulled it again. So oh, no. kind of a broken tip star. <laughs> that gives it character. <laughs> it does. This is the gnocchi paddle. Oh, cool. Oh, um, yeah. I don't know if you can see the ridges, so then you can make things. Whoops, I don't know which way to go. Things like caterpillars, my hands shake. So you can see the texture. Oh, that's really cool. It's I fun. Love that texture. That's so yeah. cool. That's awesome. Yeah, and after tonight, if everybody wants to just take it even further, like it's just amazing what you can do with wall hangings. Like this is just a whole um, spool of yarn and a whole, just one package of model magic and glitter. <laughs> And lots of glitter. Did you just put the completed stars in like glue and then glitter on top of them or? Yeah, so I have this um, glue spray. It's Elmer's, so it's not too toxic. Um, it's Elmer's spray and I sprayed it on the stars and then I poured um, this glitter on it and let it dry and yeah. Well, that's awesome. It was really fun. I kind of want to see if I can add glitter to the model magic. I'm going to do that next. Just cut out a simple leaf design. All right, so with final steps, I know you all are gonna be adding probably so much more to your pieces after we're done. But you know, just make sure your holes are in. You don't have to hang it up yet if you really wanna make sure your pieces are super strong before you hang them onto your dowel rods. But I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to start hanging two of them onto my dowel rod. Wow, wow it, it's crazy it's how fast it has like dried out. It's like a completely different texture now. Oh yeah. Um, and some other tips too, I would not really wet it. Um, you get the most smooth product fresh out of the bag as you mold it. So you'll have some string or yarn. I'm gonna cut mine. Okay. 
and you're going to want to think about spacing when you are arranging where you want to hang your i'm going to call our pieces ornaments does that sound good hannah mm -hmm. ornaments right yeah um, so you just want to think about like how you want them to hang and like what area you want them to hang um and it's really fun because you can adjust it so you can tie your string to your ornament just basically a simple knot right mm -hmm. and like i said i'm taking a risk because gravity is doing its magic right now you can see it's kind of like starting to pull Ooh, yeah right so be careful everybody um so I'm just gonna like lay it flat as soon as I show you guys. So, but then you basically just string it through and then tie it to your dowel rod. I'm gonna try to lay it down. I have an idea kind of. Melissa, do you just kind of like tie a knot onto the dowel rod just, or do you? Yeah, just a knot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing two knots. It's a double knot. And as I said, gravity is working against me. So be careful, everybody. And if you wanted to really get fancy, you could take multiple pieces of string and do a braid. You could bead onto the string too, if you have beads laying around the house. Um, mm. You can do so many things. It's just so fun. Make sure your model magic doesn't touch another piece because it'll stick. Yeah, I figured that out the hard way as well. <laughs> so, oh gosh, here's gravity. Um, okay, hold on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a different piece. Um, it's just kind of hard to show because I'm working vertical you guys are probably working flat, which is really helpful. So just lay it like horizontal on the table and then you can plan it out a lot better with how you want it to be arranged onto your dowel rod. So here's another um, piece from yesterday that's more dried out and more stable. Cause as I said, it does take about 48 hours to dry. Piece. Hanging already like this, and then oh, wow. I yeah, and then I can trim off the access so it kind of stays more flush to the ornament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can trim it off after it dries or just while it's wet? Um, you can trim it off when it's wet. Um, just make sure it lays flat. Yeah. I think that's the only trick to this process tonight is making sure you don't hang it up right away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like those stars were drying for at least probably two hours before I started hanging them up. So, but to be safe, wait 48 hours. Okay, this has absolutely flown by. This has been so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa, do you want to tell everybody where um, people can find you and your work? Totally. I'll, I will send out some links in the chat. 
in just a moment after I hang up my next teardrop. Awesome. Thank you. Um, anybody have any examples that they want to show if they're laying nice and flat? I don't want anybody to risk their piece. Um, I'll go ahead and show. I have some leaves that turned out okay. And then I have my little marbled moons, which I'm pretty excited about. Awesome, I love it. Let's see. Samantha, what do you guys have going? So I tried to tilt it down. I don't know if you could see, but mm -hmm. I did my dog's paw. I shoved it in the center here. Oh my gosh, did you get your dog to come over to, to the table and? Yeah, she's sleeping next to us. So oh. I just kind of mashed it in there. That's so special, I love it. Yeah, and then I'm just making some beads to hang across like the dowel, like that kind of, I'm gonna try. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks, it's fun. Love it. Thank, Thank you for teaching us, this has been great. Totally. Um, anybody else, let's see. Elizabeth, what do you have going? Oh, I see a rainbow, Tara or Tara. Oh, that's neat. Beautiful. What other forms do people have going? So I'm gonna trim mine, just a little. Snip, snip. And remember, these are from yesterday, so they're nice and dry. I just made some different shapes. I made some stars and some coils and cool. some little flowers. Oh, those are really pretty. Nice. And you can color them afterwards if you wanted to, too, or spray paint them or whatever. Yeah, I thought I might paint them or something. I hadn't decided. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing. Sweet. Alrighty, well, this has been really great. I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic back to Alyssa to close us out. Thanks for coming, everybody. All right. I just wanna like show what I made really quick because I'm all about instant gratification and I want to <laughs> be mine tonight. Um, so I smushed the clay against the string and it just kind of stayed there. So I made these little blobs and it's like not really pretty, but I'm really proud of it. Um, anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, thank you so much, Melissa and Hannah and behalf of myself and everyone at MCA Denver. Thank you all for crafting with us tonight. If you enjoyed this evening, we have one more Laugh Your Craft Off event next Wednesday at the exact same time. And next week, we have artist Colby Marie of the Secret Love Collective, who will be teaching us how to make fabric dragons with local improviser and actor Quinn Marchman of the Black Actors Guild. You can register for the event at the link that we will send in the chat right now, or you can find the link on our website at mcadenver.org. Please tell a friend and join us again. Stay safe out there and have a very happy new year, everyone. Thank you all so much. Get home safe. Happy crafting. <laughs>